We have our second game of cross groups coming your way now. It is going to be Singularity up against Riddle. Uh, Singularity and Riddle both performing pretty well so far. Uh, Riddle really on the up, though. They uh, recently took out BTXL as well, which was another big blow to BTXL, but a huge win for Riddle. And these two teams on paper should be relatively easily, easily matched. But if we're taking the dusty result by anything to go by, Riddle are going to absolutely turbo stomp this, and uh, Singularity haven't got a hope in hell. <laughs> I mean, I would, I would say this this one's actually, even though the scoreline obviously does favor Singularity, I think in Singularity's losses, they in their loss, they've looked quite sloppy. And even in the, some of their wins, sorry, they've, they've looked a bit off. It hasn't been clean sailing throughout. So I think there's definitely a big opportunity for Riddle to challenge them. I also think Slow Q in his recent games has looked really on point. He definitely had a rough one earlier in the season, but I feel like the roster's starting to come together. So they're definitely on a good run of form. And I just find them so evenly matched on every single position of the map, but most importantly, the bot lane, because we've also been talking a lot about Dragnet and Prosper, how they're so good, uh, how they make Singularity like shine, especially in the early game, the way Dragda plays, the way Prosper plays with Dragda. But if you go onto the other side, PlayStation has been a staple in the Nordics. And now Gooby, uh, coming from a really good run uh, at EU Master Showcase in his talent, I think it's going to be uh, a bot diff on whichever team wins this game. I'm actually going to disagree with you because I really think this one might be a mid diff because I think Fury has oh. been absolutely on fire in this game. Uh, and I actually think the best performance a slow queue had so far was on set and Singularity took it out with our first ban. So I'm actually on the Fury hype train fully. So I guess we'll get to see whether it's bot or mid diff or mid diff. Well, look, as long as Prosper doesn't level one it, I think we're uh, we're probably in a no case of Singularity. <laughs> but Fury, got Harley for Fury, uh, so yeah, Fury is. I've kind of I've been singing this guy's praises for the first few weeks in the NLC. I think he's the best mid, maybe even in the entire tournament. I you know I I wouldn't even be hesitating to say that. I think Fury, even Fury, someone tweeted Fury the other day. I find it really funny. It said, "How's your NLC experience been going, Fury?" And he just tweeted a picture of him with a giant, or like a hiker with a giant backpack on. <laughs> and it was just, uh, it was just quite funny. And uh, Fury clearly, feel, you know, sort of joshing around with his teammates. But I do think he is. Super, super good. Now we're going to see the Renekton locked in. That's usually a pretty solid answer into the Akali. We've seen it a few times. So whether that goes mid, we'll have to see. Hmm. Okay, this is this is a rough one. This is a rough one because we saw in the previous game that a lot of melee champions that don't necessarily have really hard engages, such as the Renekton, such as the Zinza, really do suffer versus someone like a Thresh, especially when the box goes down, especially with the Flay. It's just so hard to try and create your engage and find your opening and find the ADC. And right here, Singularity don't even have to be, yeah, they don't even have to be their bot there at this point, because there's so many hyper carries that you can give to Dragda, who is so good at them, that even if Riddle just ban two straight out the bat, there will be a couple left. It's pretty cool seeing the Trundle of the Surgeons. We actually hear talks of a bit of Trundle and Sejuani showing up in scrims and looking pretty strong. The Trundle did recently get a buff to the slow on his pillar. And I think just with the meta no longer being as farm oriented as it was prior to the jungle changes, he's in a decent spot where he can go for the Zudi skirmishes. Particularly when you're looking at the likes of Renekton and Jin Zhao, you can chomp them, reduce their attack damage, skirmish while in the early game, and look to set up your lanes. And I think Riddle made the right call with the Nautilus. You do want that extra level of engage. The thing is, like, uh, Thresh can handle that matchup okay. I know a lot of people talk about how Nautilus is good into Thresh, but I've spoken to Prosper and he personally enjoys the Thresh matchup and favors it. So I feel like both teams got a fair few tools, but I'm edging towards Singularity right now. Yeah, interesting one to see the uh, the Trundle come back through because that's something that Nolte has played quite a lot throughout his career, even when Trundle wasn't necessarily a high tier pick. Um, and so I'm assuming that's going over to Nolte here, and that's, that's going to be providing an extra element that I haven't really seen a huge amount of. I've seen, I think I've seen a little bit of Trundle in competitive recently, but not a massive amount. Um, so that's definitely something to keep our eyes on throughout this. And it, may, it may help be looking to facilitate Fury, facilitate his bot lane potentially. Uh, it's something that works well, pretty well with Thresh as well to set up those individual picks as two. You're going to see a lot of Eddie Carry bans tagged today. They're Felios being banned, the Ezreal is gone, the Varus is gone, the Kais is gone. Uh, you know, the Jinx is still available for Dragda yeah. if he wants it, you know, alongside the Thresh. We'll just see if Singularity takes something else to the board here. And um, Gooby, you know, may want to go for that uh, um, Tristana. Okay. Well, I, I was about to say that I, I really hope they do 
from Singularity ban up the Tristana because these are the two picks that we usually uh, be combined with the Nautilus if you want to play high aggressively uh, bot lane, if you want to play the Oli in the dive and such, like Tristana and Kaiser are the two that come in mind, they're banned out. I feel like they want to push Dragda onto something like the Jinx, which is extremely dangerous, if you will. The Kogmo is still up and available. I'm not a huge fan of the Kogmo when there's no Enchanta around, unless they pick something like a Karma right now, which is going to solve a lot of their problems. Yeah, unfortunately, Karma is banned, but I actually, oh, right. I, I kind of differ a bit on that. I feel like Kogmo is in a better spot than he have, has been before to like be on his own. Obviously, he still sinks really well with Enchanters, but you know, we've seen the tankier Kogmo build where essentially you are your Juggamo in and of itself. And I think you have a lot of threats on the rest of the team to sort of fill the gap for you. So I can see in this scenario, they have the, uh, the Aatrox, which is a great pick for Wazor. They have the Akali diving forwards and the Kog'Maw should be okay to survive. But Riddle, looking to contest that mid priority and have a strong 2v2 up for the LeBlanc here. So definitely potentially providing some threat for that Kog'Maw, which I feel like was something they needed to answer. I mean, Fury's like, I raise my assassin. And Slok is like, I'll raise you mine. And at this point, I feel like it's going to be a huge contention point in the mid lane because the Blank herself has to blow so much mana to push the wave and gain priority. For Akali, it's even harder because he's a melee in a ranged matchup and she will take a lot of poke and a lot of harassment. So I would love to see especially how the two mid lanes will clash because the Trundle is just such an easy champion to just go mid onto a very mobile um, a mobile. Um, mid laners such as Victor, such as Soriana, such as Syndra, and sort of disrupt them and try to get kills for Akali. But now with so much mobility onto the LeBlanc, I'd like to see where the attention is going to be turned to. I actually think a big thing here as well is since we've last seen LeBlanc, one of the changes they made is that her chain grants vision. And that's actually really important when you're playing to Akali, having some way of providing vision while she goes into a shroud. And it drastically changes the 2v2 dynamic. Because I look at Akali Trundle, I'm like, Trundle's tanky, Akali is a pain to kill. With that LeBlanc, it now really changes the dynamic. And I can see their mid jungle 2v2 being stronger. And if they apply that pressure and move it down towards bot lane, potentially you shut that Kog'Maw down early. Well, I know who's really excited about this because he's been building an Eiffel Tower while we've been waiting. Going to hand it over to Hip Rain. And he, he's really excited about this LeBlanc, apparently. <laughs> I might have just punched my desk while I laughed at that. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a LeBlanc connoisseur. I absolutely love this champion. I'm so excited to see it get pulled out. And it was something I was thinking about recently, actually. I was kind of curious why we hadn't seen too many LeBlancs show up uh, due to Akali being back in the meta. Because like Orcs hit on, when you've got the chains, you reveal her within her shroud, and it actually makes for pretty nice trading patterns versus her. Now, obviously, LeBlanc doesn't scale quite as well as an Akali does as we move later into the game, but I'm going to stop talking, otherwise I'm going to just talk about LeBlanc endlessly. No, no, cool you go board. on. I was going to say, you, you go on. Do you have more to say? I'd rather you just get it out now, Drake. So if there's it's something gonna, it, you're it's really not, passionate about... It's going to go about. on the whole time, and Sloki, you, you better not hit me here, man. <laughs> like, let's, let's see what you got. All right, yeah, because I've played with your LeBlanc before, and you know, it's... it's not... Actually, the only time I pulled LeBlanc out with you, I played really well, so... Before you say anything, shut up. I, I don't remember is that, uh, it like that, but I, I keep it wrong. You know what? It's fine. Right, on to this thing. I was now, nine I remember yes. that very distinctly. Ah, uh, sure, Jake, sure. Now, I'm curious to see what Sloki builds. Just before you go into your part, uh, Okay, really so let's go. Go on. Keep talking, because you're clearly not done. All right, go I'm on. Not, what do you I'm, think I'm he's going to be out building? Of me. What I'm, do you I'm think he's going to be building? Because I've seen, you know, lots of Luden builds, but there's also been like an Everfrost build as well show up. Um, so I'm interested in which mythic Sloki decides to go for. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. You talk. Which would you prefer, Jake? Of this, I prefer Everfrost. Oh. I actually really love the Everfrost build because you just they can't get away. Once the chains pop, you Everfrost them and you just keep going at them. It's horrible. But Ludens gives you wave clear, so. <laughs> <and> roundabouts. <laughs> now, LeBlanc has been popping up a lot in um, in the LPL as well. It's been very favored by them over there. She kind of fell out of the meta due to her she's not being as strong. It was very press, um, it was very um, priority heavy um, meta we had around when control mages really was a thing early in the season, and she just had a really hard time finding her place. Not really having you know AP items were, were got it as well at the start of the new meta so it was just at the start of the new season so it's just really hard for her to find her footing now I like some of the matchups we get into this one as well 
Trundle into Sensao. Um, I spoke to some of the Astralis staff as well, and um, it seems like that Sensara, who's been pulling out a lot in LEC, just favors that matchup a lot for Trundle. He thinks that Trundle just scales better than Sensao. He just wants Sensao kind of dust and being that frontliner, stealing the attack speed. Yeah, and he feels like it's just a better overall answer into that champion. Now, there is a lot of pressure onto MC in the beginning because you really need to make the early game work. We just yeah. saw how Max he felt in the game against Sawyer where he just got completely out-tempoed in the jungle and out jungle. There's just nothing you could do. Up in the top lane, we saw this in the last game as well. It's kind of just a sustained, a sustained tank matchup. So, you know, without jungle intervention or a real misplay, I don't really see too much kill pressure going forward. Uh, Wazel does have to be somewhat careful. He does have that death bringer stance to heal himself back up though. So yeah, I want to keep my eyes on the jungle early here. I also want to keep my eyes on mid lane, but that's that's more just for me. Um, I'm curious to see how MC pilots this. Now, it is a trundle versus the Xin Zhao, so it's not going to be quite as fast clearing as the Nidalee in the last game. So probably not going to see a full red side clear in the enemy jungle from Nolte this game. No, and, and you can already see he skipped his own crocs just because if you want to uh, match up with the tempo there is from the side of MC, well, that's just what he has to do. Um, and, and both junglers are up towards the top side here. We could see a skirmish around this scuttle when it respawns, but no, actually, Nolte just decides, you know what, I'm just going to go down towards the bottom one. And I, I feel like that's because you can take a look onto the wave state on the top side of the map. He doesn't have the top lane priority. He doesn't have the mid lane priority. So he's kind of just forced to move down to the only lane where he has that priority, which is going to be the bottom side of the map. Now, this does open a hole. Jerry in the there middle. There it is. Lane. It's a little bit of poke. Does that now, make me? Is, the is, is there lethal right now? Tell me, Hipbrain. Is, is it lethal? Uh, I I don't know. Does he have a Lich off yet? If he has a Lich off, then uh, I don't know. Fury's healing up. Actually, he's got Dorans. Uh, I think it's not lethal anymore. Okay. Okay. I well, think if he had electrocute and ignite, absolutely. He's just got electrocute, so I think no. He can he can force Fury <laughs> out, but that's it. Now, um, to bring him back to a more analytical point of view, due to Nolte uh, having to move down onto the only scuttle he could get towards the bob side, um, MC did actually get Nolte's Grom. So while Nolte is having to clear his first crux right now. Every camp right now from the side of MC. Actually, no, he didn't clear his own cracks as well. But the new camps as well is going to be level two as well. He is going to be one camp ahead. So small lead in the early game going over to the side of MC. But yeah. one camp is, you know, it's not really going to make the greatest difference. It, it might just even scale with level in it, levels anymore. So it's it's not really going to do much, really. It's a awkward wave right now for Riddle. As uh, Sloki's going to have to wait for this to kind of shove in somewhat. Fury obviously stayed in the wave while Sloki reset, bought himself a Dark Seal and Boots, and then just went for the reset. I feel like a Sloki here. You just want to trade the wave a bit. You want to keep it at this point in time because Fury, yeah. if, you can, if you can freeze it here, he's going to be forced to TP. And when he does that, well, you can just try and push out the wave. You can get your own little cheater recall through. And then you're going to have a TP advantage. So, yeah. Take a look onto Fury now, exactly. He's forced to back. Really intelligent. You played with Slowkey by the way, here. I think this was exactly what he needed to do. Yeah, absolutely. Now Fury is able to come in and just five points throughout the wave a little bit. It's Slowkey. It's going to be able to land the chains. Goes a little bit low, but MC comes in with the audacious charge and Fury lands a Shuriken flip, but he's going low. He's going down. Oh. No, he's not. Fury able to flish up, flip away to safety as here comes PlayStation missing out on the hook and MC burnt the flash there. Nulti also flashing. Is that, that's not the real Sloki. That's the uh, clone. I can't believe he lived there. Now, they do win out in, in one way, which is the XP, right? Um, PlayStation could roam up. Bot lane was pushed completely out. And Fury is going to be losing this wave if Crossfire is not freezing it, which he actually uh, will be. So they're not losing too much. Loki. Oh, good hook by Prosper onto Sloki. The exhaust is down. He's low HP. Has to dash away. Is able to survive for the moment. Pings back in. Lands the chain. Lands the hook. That's going to be it. First blood. Picked up for MC. Prosper next up. Double kill for Riddle. Oh, really intelligent by MC. Just lurking around the area now. Fury. Does he have anything to say about this? Oh, my God. He's got level six. He's looking for Sloki. Goes in. And that's an easy kill. Straight back with the Shuriken flip as well. Sloki greeting just to shove the wave. Yeah, really no reason for Slowkey to die there. Hat Flash, I think the rest of the team so what's going to be able to make use of that. And now he's the one with no TP going into this one. But MC, we talked about, all right, he got a Grump. It's not going to give him the biggest lead. Now he's got two kills 
first blood onto him, shot down as well, and he's going to be very fed on towards this and so out now. As we take a look onto the replay, I, initially it's a fine idea. They don't want to make. They want to make sure that the wave is frozen just outside of turret for Q to pick up. Loki does get low as well, but remember from the earlier skirmish, no flash onto Nolte anymore, and Loki is back onto it. The W, really nice route from PlayStation, and this is the point in time we, we talked about it. You just need to push this in. There's no reason for Loki to make that play. That's going to hurt him a little bit here as the Leeching Leer has been finished up for Fury now as uh, Sloki with that earlier reset actually doesn't quite have the Lost Chapter, so it's just double Amp Tome for him. As uh, Riddle are going to try and pick themselves up this first Dragon, MC with that double kill, obviously got a bit of an advantage over Nolte with the Whip and the Phage finished up. As the, that's a big advantage. Like for for this Pinsau right now, you don't you don't mind forcing any skirmishes. You can see if you can get your own group blue buff right now. I honestly wouldn't mind seeing MC just skip some camps because you have the top lane priority, you have the mid lane priority. So if you just get um, if you just make a fast clear of your blue side and move on to Nolte's blue side, you're gonna have a really really nice party down there. There's gonna be no way for Prospect to move out because bot lane has all the priority. So I think right now onto the side of Riddle, they need to be proactive with this lead they have onto this and Sal. Yeah, I think they really do. Now, Screw and Dragon, I'll tell you that's pretty proactive. I think that's all right. They can look towards this Rift Herald as uh, Kex is shoving in Wazor, though he has gone a little bit low. There's a bit of a CS deficit actually starting to grow down. Up, up sorry, in the top lane there. 20 CS lead for the side of Kex as well. Mid lane, there is a lead for Slow Q, slowly starting to accrue. Obviously got that double assist, but Fury with the kill. Kind of negating somewhat of that deficit right down there. And they've already rotated PlayStation over, so the attention is definitely going to be towards this Rift Herald here. It's going to be interesting where they decide to do that. Where they, If they're going to try and just take a turret with Gooby in a side lane, or maybe free up a bit of space for Slow Q and get him a little bit of gold on the LeBlanc and get him rolling. We'll have to they're keep our eyes on Gooby what they up. do with it, but Singularity not willing to give it up without a fight from the looks of things. Yeah, Kex just went back in shop, got his Executioner's Golden, got the pickaxe, Wastor. When he, had, he was forced to make an early TP and he's only got a cloth armor, so there's no realistic way for him to back here. So you can see everyone has actually moved themselves up on this map. Now, they move Gooby up here as well. I think the only reason you would move Gooby up here is so you can actually give him the Herald himself so he got, uh, just gets solo plating, but decided that there's no fight to actually break out and therefore move him back uh, on towards the bottom side of the map. And once again, pressure is just onto Riddle now to make a play. I think they have yeah. every tool in their toolbox right now to actually do that as well. But bot lane, we saw always priority for them. Top side, always priority from the side of Kex and Sloki as well. Even though he's, in, even though he fell a bit behind when he died, there is still a lot of priority onto this LeBlanc. So this Rift Ale could realistically speaking go anywhere for Riddle and as Team Singularity, you just want to try and even the map state a little bit. You just want to handshake any, any play that's made, trying to see if you can cross map whatever there is, and don't really contest Riddle in any of it. Because right now, if you contest them, you're just going to be losing out in the fight, and you're going to fall further behind. You want to get your items onto the Akali. You want to get your items onto the Cockmore, and then you can feel confident in starting up the fight. It's interesting, actually, looking at the items that have come through. It's in the Rage Knight for Dragdar. I was actually. Uh, we, I, I've seen a few I, different builds. I've seen a lot of different builds actually on the Cogmore as of late. I've not seen a Gwinzu's first in any of the games so I've casted. Apparently, that is mathematically correct in terms of raw damage you can get. Oh, hello. Hi there. Nice little trade. Are you a fan of that? I was a fan of that. Got the double sigil off for a bit more burst. Hmm. Is that, that is that your go to? Your is it is a QR or is it the W? Oh, okay. I actually I'm just gonna carry on with my. It was, yeah, it was, it was E E Q R. Oh, wow. You got the double sigil burst on the chains. And now with this mid priority, you can see Loki has moved down here. Riftel has been popped, and they are giving it to Gooby. Nimal in the top lane. Okay, it's forced to flash away. Riftel charge. Just gonna take a couple of plates, Gooby. I do believe was in range to pick up that gold, so that will be injected into him. We can see it now. Uh, actually, I don't think he was. And no, there's no way he was in range. He's only got. I, yeah, he, he did get gold. Oh. I'm pretty sure he did get gold. Actually, PlayStation would have been in range as well. That's why it's less. It would have been spread between three. Okay, yeah, I think he got the plate gold then. Yeah, but that kind of goes back to what I talked about. If you move your bot laner up for Rift Held, just give her the Herald. 
Like, I, I swear, 80% of the times, I see Rift Hells being used for the AD carry anyway. So why bother sharing it with your jungler that's going to fall off later into the game? Oh, Slowkey with a very favorable trade as well here. And Drake is spawning in 50 seconds. Bot priority, top lane priority, mid lane priority for Middle. Way, okay, yeah. he had lethal because uh, he had off, but he missed the chains, so he didn't have lethal. <laughs> oh, sucks. Oh? Oh? Is yeah, wait, what the hell? That's so much damage. He's onto the wrong one. Sloke is running away. Fury goes in. The flash comes down and Sloke you able to survive. And you just see the raw power of Akali there as well. Even able to proc the Conqueror in that exchange at the same time. Haven't even finished the Rift Maker. So you can only dread what's about to come out of Fury's Akali. I think he is recalling now. I think he's waiting for the last goal to actually get it. Uh, no, actually not. He still doesn't have it. So, you can only praise that from the side of Riddles. You're very happy about the fact that you can just start up Drake without having to worry about that. Perfect execution is down as well, so you should just go over to Riddle. And there we talk about the cross map coming through from Singularity. Don't attempt any place. Just see if you can get your own leverage back into this game. Get your own items, and when you're confident enough in your fighting capabilities, that's yeah. where you pull the trigger. Well, we've seen the Gore Drinker finish up onto MC. We got the Kraken Slayer on Gooby. There's just a lost chapter on Slow Q, not really hinting towards what uh, item he'll be picking up as his next one. But almost there with the Rift Maker for Fury. Very, very close to finishing that one up. And 13 minutes on the clock. The gold lead is 2,000 in favor of Riddle right now. We'll have to keep our eyes on. What they're going to do is they have got themselves a, a small gold lead. And now a bit of that is obviously in that jungle. You can see, actually, most of that is in the jungle, actually, <laughs> MC. So he's been doing a good job. He's been able to pick up a Rift He's been able to pick up both the dragons this game. So it's not like he's not done anything with his lead. But I want to see a little bit more. I want to see him get his side lanes ahead. Get his, well, any of his lanes ahead, to be honest. And out of nowhere, after Gooby got that bot lane to it as well, you can kind of see it. A thousand gold ahead. And breaking news as well from KitKat. Lovely. Yeah, you can get yourself some skins if you head over to KitKat Gaming. It's not the only place to get some skins, though. NLC as well. If you head over to NLC LOL, there is the play of the day vote. I believe it's on today. I might have just entered that, but, you know, it's the pin tweet if it's on there. But even Enter. if it's not today, you should go in and follow our socials just to not miss out on that chance. We're giving away everything. Skins on KitKat, skins on Twitter, skins wherever you like it. Just follow our socials. Stay tuned for that. And you know what they say, skins equal wins. They only say that in gold and below, I think, but... I guarantee every game this split has been won by a team with a skin. Is that why Faker has started losing now as well? Yeah, yeah, because he, he didn't realize skins actually do equal wins. His MC's jumped in onto Nolte. I want to see him go aggressive. I don't know if this was what I wanted out of him. He's knocked up, he's chained, he's pulled back. And in like a yo-yo he goes. The shutdown is there. Sloki jumps in looking for a quick assassination off. But yes, the ping back out. The knock comes in from oh. Wade. Looking for the follow-up. A beautiful double kill. Comes through for the side of Singularity. And Riddle are routed. They are being run down now. As Kex is going to get knocked up. The chains, everything continues. The hook goes wide. But here it comes. Nolte secures the next kill. Riddle lose free. Yeah, great punish from the side of Singularity. Because you know what? They just catch Riddle in thing. I don't know what they're doing there, really. This setup was good for them. It was just, it was just off tempo. It, I, I felt like you had all the members in the background. MC was just feeling he needed that counter jungle immediately, but the laners, they weren't ready for the backup. Every one of Singularity was there before the members of Riddle could collapse. And because of this, they lose out on the fight where they lose members, gives gold back over to the side of Singularity, and they lose out on the second Herald. It was just, yeah, int by Riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we can uh, see it all start here. MC just way too over eager and the team not willing to let him go. And yeah, then once again, you can see everyone was in a position where they could collapse from the side of Riddle um, if they had just waited a five more seconds, really. And they committed for that play as a, as a team. But speaking of team singularity, just deciding to stay together, you can see there's nothing they can do so hard for them to fight with the pillar as well. Coming out from Nolte and... Waysaw did a remarkable job of keeping so many members CC'd in that fight with multiple cues from the Aatrox. Nicely done from him as well. Waysaw 
haven't had the best season yet so far, but this time around, really shining in these small skirmishes. And of course, speaking of shining, once again, have to credit the Singularity mid laner, Fury popping off on this Akali once again. And he got the shutdown on MC, so here's a lot of gold injected into him. I'd actually like to have a quick check in on the individual golds now after that little skirmish. Yes, yeah, so Fury, who was behind, is now starting to sleek ahead. It's only a 300 gold lead over him and Slow Q, so. Considering Slokus died twice, not completely the worst game from him. There's still a big problem in a sense, but Gooby is ahead though of Dragdar right now. And MC also ahead of Nolte. So the gold's still pretty okay for the side of Riddle. They are up, but another play like that, and this could swing a little bit too far away from them. Dragon's pointing up. We're looking 40 seconds until that third soul goes, well, the third dragon is there. And it'll be another mountain soul, which can... Actually, be quite annoying for the Akali. All the extra shielding and resistances can make her life a little bit more annoying. Yeah, and let's take a look at the summoner spells onto this one. No heal for Gooby. Does have flash, though. And they are looking to catch him up. No TP from Kex either, so he'll be forced to walk down here. It's a bit oh, off I mean, tempo. So you can see five members from Singularity have already gathered here. And with this man advantage, they're able to get the pressure into the mid lane. They're able to utilize that pressure to walk into the river, pull up the vision. And now Riddle is finally here, but they're a bit late to the play. This is a fight where the setup is in favor of Singularity. And with that Rift Hell, to gain a six man advantage. This could be a dicey situation for Riddle. Well, Wazel takes a little bit of damage from the change in, change in the sigil from Slowkey, but not fully committing too hard here. Dragon's already been started up by the side of Riddle as PlayStation finds himself caught. Goes in for the hook. Death Charge comes in. Slowkey interrupted by the play with the double dash and Gooby's already low. The shutdown is there for Dragdar, who's found himself a double kill on the Kog'Maw. Like that as Fury takes out MC. The jungler is down. And Singularity win the next team fight back to back. And that's the problem when your biggest gold lead is on towards this in Sao. There's nothing he can utilize that for. Your biggest issue right now of Singularity is Fury onto the Akali. And there's no lockdown on him whatsoever. It's so tough for them to play these fights. And Gooby just instantly shot down by that Akali. There's not really much peeling you can do in that situation. So let's take a look onto the replay once again. You can see Gooby onto the side right side. Actually playing flank. Slow Q onto the left. So they're trying to come in. But Slow Q, as soon as he's exhausted, he's just out of the fight. And he's just watching. The rest of his team gets absolutely demolished. They weren't even on the same target. There was a window for possibly blowing up Waste or but Riddle. They're just collapsing in these fights. There are a couple of really cool things happening in that fight. First of all, Prospect playing Slow Q to stop him from the uh yes. dissonance. Uh, and then secondly, PlayStation ulted Prosper and not Fury. So Fury was just able to instantly ult onto the back line, blow them up, and then peace out. Bit of a fumble there from Riddle, and that has now put this gold lead, which was heavily in their favor, only now down to just under a thousand. Actually, quite a lot under a thousand. It's barely there. Is they're now starting to struggle with a four, one Akali, Riftmaker finish up, Zonya's Hourglass on the way, Slow Q. Just finished up that um, Luden Zeko, so a bit of a ways away from kind of getting it anywhere near to be able to match Fiore and Gooby as well. An item down to Dragdar, who's finished up the Hurricane, got the uh, Gwinsu's Rage Blade for a little while as well. I'm struggling to see what Riddle needs to do now. Well, I'll tell you what. They, they need to be ready to just shut down Fury. Like, when you have flashes on, the flashes on Renekton, since I'll get the CC lockdown before she can get out of there. Because right now, if a normal fight just pans out, that's not on your turn, they'll be able to just walk over you. You don't have the, 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 the tools right now in your arsenal to actually make sure that Akali won't be able to just shatter Gooby in these fights. Yes, he does have his own ultimate for peeling, but... There's still the shuriken flip, you get hit by that, it's absolutely over already. Perfect execution gives you a lot of survivability to move a bit. I don't, that's not even a word, is it? No, it's probably not, but you, you get what I mean. I get it, so, no It's on to the side of Riddle. Oh, Try and get a pick. Good blast, that's what they need, the chains are on, and that's Loki going low. Chain's gonna come in from him onto one as Gooby flashes in for the wow. shutdown and jumps straight back out. That's a Chad play, but Fury, he's looking for some revenge. Wazor's coming in, a lot of damage has already been put down as they're trying to get the lockdown onto them. Fury has to go golden as he jumps back out of the pit. Shut down by Gooby though, as he's now resetting through this fight as MC so takes out Wazor. Singularity are just squashed as three members go down. Exactly what needed to happen from Riddle had happened in that fight. And you know what? That was that was a small window, but they made the most use of it as well. Got the pick on to Dragdor. 
Fury rushed in, thought he was alright, they got the CC onto him, they made him low, and they made the play happen, and crucially, all that shutdown goal went over to Gooby. So not only do they win the fight, they get the shutdown and they get the Baron, so Tempo is back onto Riddle's side. Beautiful, they got their Baron. Now they're gonna go back to base and spend that gold. Just such a good flash by PlayStation. And Kubi as well, like it really does take balls going for that play there. No hesitation whatsoever, just flashes over instantly. And then it kind of comes down to the peel. Great ultimate from MC, which scatters the fight a bit. Gooby just weaves in a bit, auto attack onto Fury, and then boom, shutdown is all they needed. Wazor can't grab the Lantern. It's getting pink ward, nothing or no way for him to get it out of there, realistically speaking. And as we talked about, Baron goes over to Riddle. Finally up in gold as well, 4k, and I'd actually like to take a look at it on towards that gold to see how that is distributed now. Yeah, Gooby, 10,000 gold in his inventory, so make no mistake, Gooby is the carry. So game plan right now for Riddle, peel that man. Game plan for Singularity, one shot that guy. Uh, Dragon spawning up in 40 seconds, teleport's coming in. Slowkey joins up with the team. I'm going to clear out this vision for the moment. It is Singularity kind of had the vision favor here around the area. Sloki just poking out a little bit as Kex is going to clear out the side wards as well. Fury in the bot lane, so we'll come in for that kind of longer flank. As you can see the vision now, Nolte going to get hit by the chase. That's a really, really good pillar. That's the end of Sloki. He's popped. He's down. Dragdar's able to get the kill. They do get the hook off and Gooby's free firing away. Nolte's going low, but Nolte's able to survive. It's a one-for-one one trade so far, but Fury has now joined into the fray. Bit of poke by Dragdar onto the back end of the fight. What can Riddle do? Yeah, pay attention to Akali. Still has that perfect execution, so you can't hold your breath just let or let your breath go just yet. You still need to play with your tongue in your mouth, not drop any ball here whatsoever. That's a good hook. Dragdar has to flash away. Fury comes in. Perfect execution down. Into the shroud he goes. Flings back. Oh, look at the damage coming out from Fury. MC jumps into the middle of everyone. Trying to sustain for now, but the shutdown is there. There's the rain. Oh, not enough to get the kill. Baron is still on these members, but they are looking at two contests. No teleport for Sloku, no teleport for Kex. Dragon number two secured for Singularity. We're two apiece right now, but Baron is still on Riddle. And you can see, even with the gold lead they have right now, Fury's making every fight so goddamn difficult for them. It, it, on, it honestly just comes down to Fury. Once again, he is like 1v9 in this game for sure, Fury. Keeping Singularity in this one. Dragda now is starting to get really fed up as well. You can see he has uh, the components now for the Wits End as well to get that extra unhit damage in. But take a look onto that replay again. Really good hook from PlayStation, forcing Dragda to get out of the way. And then Shuriken Flip walking into every member. And the last part of the perfect execution is just making the HP bar so low that right now Riddle, they're too scared to walk up here. They don't want to risk it. They don't want to throw away the lead they just had. And that's monumental for Singularity. Get the second Mountain Drake. Now the breath, the final breath of that uh, Baron, they were able to pick themselves up that mid lane tower and the top lane tower. So a bit more gold into Riddle. And this does not feel like a game where Riddle are up in gold. They are up almost one, sorry, 5,000 gold, not 1,000, 5,000 gold right now. Maths, uh, maths is hard. And Slow honestly, you, I, it, it's all it's all fury. I mean, you can see the gold yeah. between the mid laners. Again, this doesn't feel like a LeBlanc with a gold lead. This feels That's like what I mean. completely dominating the game. It's a good job by Slowkey to be in a position where somehow he is up in gold over Fury. But even so. So, Jake, as the LeBlanc connoisseur, is this champive? Or do, or do you feel like it's just really hard for Slowkey to make his impact in these fights? Um... I think Nolte, I mean, Nolte shut him down with a beautiful pillar. And, like, there's nothing you can do in that situation, right? Uh, but he didn't really find the opportunity to punish Fury, and Fury got that early kill as well. And I think from there, things have just been really, really rough for him. He needs to kill Dragdar. I think that's, like, his only real target now is Dragdar for, like, a, a full combo. Uh, but that requires him being on a flank, that requires him setting up for it. Otherwise, he has to be super careful because Prosper Flay can shut him down, the Hooks can shut him down, the Pillars can shut him down, the Akali can just shut him down. There's so many tools to actually deal with this LeBlanc. And Riddle have a pretty decent tool to deal with Fury in the depth charge, but I just... 
so far the death shards have not been on the right target for me. It 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 is like it is good in terms of it's a single just point and click ultimate you can spend onto a target, but a lot of the times with that death charge, Akali makes it really hard for you to actually get onto her. He buys a lot of time with the sure you can flip into the shroud. Where it's like, oh yeah, we stopped her, but now she's just knocked up into the shroud and she flipped herself away. So I guess it's depth charge hook auto. It's like the way to make sure she dies. Yeah, you, you, that's really all you need to make sure the lockdown is there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I completely agree. Now, game is being slowed down a little bit, and honestly, I actually think that favors the side of Singularity. The more of items you could get onto the side of Akali, the more mm. items you could get onto Drag Cross, the better. So right now. You don't mind this state and Singularity. They're looking to stack on towards Soul Point here. They already have two Mounted Drakes. They can become incredibly tanky. This magic resist onto the Cockmo from Wit's End is... There's a lot of value in this, actually. Um, even if he does end up going for the Randy and Omens build as well. A lot of value in those Mountain Drake extra percentages you get on the resistance. Mm. Well, the vision's getting cleared out. It looks like Riddle are actually looking to turn their attention towards the Baron Nasher. They've got the vision set up for themselves. There's... Absolutely no vision from Singularity is being very lovely demonstrated here. They did try to start it, but the Squire comes down. They still got uh, no Squires left, actually. I was looking at the wrong side of the scoreboard. There are no Squires left on the side of Singularity, so Riddle can now play with a little bit more safety there. They were looking for a bit of poke here and there, but not able to find it as Wazor jumps over the bush, over the wall. They're just going to miss all that priority. They went on to the Drake, or Baron rather, didn't want to start it, and... Singularity just kind of called that bluff and just pushed into the mid lane to get their own vision. You can see oh. all that vision set up. Okay. Flash for flash. Wazel's flash for PlayStation's flash. Remember, PlayStation has the hex flash, so still got a little bit of use out of that one. And does now mean that Wazel might struggle to jump in to try and deal with Gooby on the back line, providing Gooby doesn't just jump into his face. There are three items on the Tristana. The Tristana is pretty strong right now. We've got 23 seconds until this dragon spawns up. And remember, Riddle have moved all their vision up to the top side of the map. They now need to move it down if they want to try and pick up this dragon. They are getting the priority set up here. Gooby is down on towards the bot lane. Mid lane has been pushed in, but they'll probably lose that mid lane advantage here. There are four members. TP is up from the Akali as well. Death does come through. And question is... Loki's They're actually going to spot him here. Oh, Fury just jumps in. They're coming in for the teleport. Looking for the dragon. It's stolen away by Nolte. Gooby getting jumped onto by Fury. Fury comes in with the pipe execution. The five-point strike is there. Gooby jumps away. Trying to buy some space. Here comes Loki. But the fight is just going oh, no. absolutely back and forth on the other side. A great stopwatch comes in from Fury. But the chains will connect. The double kill's already there for Dragtar. There's the shutdown for Sloku. But Singularity, they are pulling the trigger and chasing down these final two members. The Crocodile is knocked up. And the Crocodile stride breakers away. The chain comes in from Sloku and it's instantly broken as Kex is dashing. And and jumping away, but he is going to be cut off by Singularity. Although he might just look for a quick recall. The Baron is up. Oh, the jungle are dead. And the dragon stolen. Singularity should just be able to take this as a free item Cogmore. It's going to be very quick. And once again, it's just Fury carrying that fight. Finding the only priority target that matters. But Kex is here for the TP. Loki here as well. Looking for a little bit of poke out from Sloku, but this Baron already half HP. The rest of the team are coming in. There's a great hook by Prosper. Into the box, into the pillar. Sloku jumps away with a double dash, and the Baron is going on. 3,000 health. They're going to kill the clone. And this is Baron for Singularity. Nothing they could do, but watch as the objective falls. As Dragdar will spot out Sloku with a Bio Arcane Barrage. And Sloku is going to peel back towards safety. Let's have a look at the replay, because I was focusing heavily on Fury in this fight. Yeah, me too. I wasn't really looking at anything different. You can see Fight is just getting completely split up. And while the rest of the team is trying to peel off Goopy, they're just getting fought and just getting killed. And there's no reliable reliable backline damage to take care of the frontline here from the side of Riddle. So Fury does end up going down here. But at what cost, really? The rest of the game is just back into SMG's favor. And we do have a little pause here, but... I mean, it, it's hard not to see the talent in Fury. We've talked about this guy so many times this season and every goddamn time. Yes, he's on Akali, a really um, a debated champion in terms of how broken she is right now. But we've seen him do this loads of times and on different champions as well. He's yeah, just absolutely. doing a phenomenal job for Singularity. I mean, we'd, we'd also seen, you know, Dragdar smurfing the, um, the quizzes and things we do at the beginning of the show, but he's having a bloody <laughs> good game on the Cogmore. Six, one and three, you know, 
This isn't just Fiore putting the weight on his back. I think Dragdar's doing a really good job on the Cogmore. He didn't get too far behind in lane versus Gooby. And it's, it just feels like this game's starting to run away from the side of Riddle. We have had a light, a light pause, but it has already been resolved on our screen. So oh, lovely. getting back into the action any second now. But yeah, I, did, I think Nolte's pillar is as well. I think Nolte, actually, his scoreline does not reflect how well he's played. Him and Prosper have shut Sloki down so hard. He has not found the opportunity to jump in. And when he has, a pillar has caught him out or a flay has caught him out. <laughs> And it's only going to get harder. I, I think for the side of Sloki as well, you need to stop playing these team fights front to back, uh, front to back on the on the LeBlanc. Like he is level 16. He does have that pen that comes through for the Void stuff. He does have that uh, Luden's Echo as well. And you can see he's finding the components for the Rabbit and Steph Gap. It's just really hard for him to find the right in entrance onto a fight. I, I think realistically speaking from Riddle, what they need to do is put Sloki in a position where he's able to burst someone down before the fight starts to put themselves in a better situation because once the team fight has started, we've seen it so many times, there's really nothing he can do. Like he's yeah. literally just watching as the rest of his team is crumbling. It's going to be this final tier one turret going down and the gold lead getting close once again. Baron now on Singularity. It's on them to make sure that they use it properly. It uh, looks like they might just interrupt this Renekton and recall from Wazel. He's got a quicker recall anyways. Tier 2 Tower will also go down in the top, in the bottom lane. Singularity now starting to tie up. We've only got two turrets left Gooby. in the game. Gooby is stealing caps <laughs> away on the other side of the map. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to compliment him for finding his own resources, I guess. He's got four items. This is an Infinity Edge now finished off on the Tristana. Sure, Cogmo scales. We all know Cogmo scales, but it's not like Tristana doesn't as well. Tristana gets all the extra range, now level 16, four items. This Tristana is going to be doing some numbers. We need to see Riddle play around it, though. We need to see Fury not just instantly blow Gooby up or slow Q able to deal with Dragdar. These are the problems they're having right now. Is Gooby is on the flank. Not sure if you want to be flanking on the Tristan, if I'm going to be honest with you. Is uh, Sloki just going in for a little bit of light poke onto Nolte? Here's the thing, though. It seems like Dragda, you know, he's actually got healthcare built around him. He's got a safe security net. Anything happens, there's someone there to help him. Gooby, yeah. he's all in his lonesome. There's no insurance. There's no healthcare. There's no one to help him. Fury goes onto him. He's most likely dead. So that makes the situation so much harder for them, even with a gold lead. There you go. The Lantern saves him as the Depth Charge does absolutely diddly squat. In goes MC, Sloki jumps back out as Fury jumps in. Stopwatch is used and maybe they'll look for something to lock him down. Wazel's on the flank, Fury uses a lot of health here. As we are able to hold on for now. They now need to go deal with Wazel as Kex gets himself caught out by the chains as Gooby will be able to clear away the wave. And slow Q eats a hook, over the wall he goes, a great pillar, but he's able to double dash away to safety as Fury comes in, Fury goes out. Gooby jumps in onto Wazel, that's a lot of damage to wow. the Tristana! Holy moly, Wazel! And you can see, had there just been one extra follow-up, had Sloki not been chunked out, they'd be able to pick up that kill as well. But Prosper finds a great hook onto Sloki, who's once again, yes, there was a small gold lead for him, but there's really nothing they've been able to do with it. And now they're forced to back off here. There's 30 seconds onto the soul spawns for this side of Singularity, but they do have TP. They do have home guards coming through. The Drake will not spawn before they're actually here, so they can take control over this area again. You can take a look onto the ultimate. It's perfect oh, execution. Once again, back up, and this can just be checked with Cockmore. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no oh, yeah, need Cock to face again. Cockmore exists. My bad. Yeah. I mean, Singularity, they can give this dragon up and just take in him to here if they really want to. They have that ability to them. This is not the one as the hook lands in. Nolte's going low already. A lot of damage coming out from Gooby, but Nolte able to flash away. Wazel in the middle of everyone. Fury hasn't joined the fight yet as now Gooby is the target. They're getting a little bit of damage off as Fury able to take out a kill. The death charge is coming in. Gooby has to jump out. The double kill picked up by Fury. Wazel's popped away as Gooby is the only one standing. As LeBlanc's not close. He's all alone. He's all on his lonesome as the Shuriken flip goes wide. The soul will be secured for Singularity and Gooby is cut off. Gooby is all alone with nowhere to go <laughs> as they will stagger his death. They will stagger his reset. He tries to catch the wave as Fury jumps into him, gets the shuriken flip and absolutely obliterates him. Singularity will take the base and most likely take the game with this. It looks so doomed for him. I'd love to see the damage grab there. He was the only one dealing damage on his team. There was literally no one else doing anything. And the Singularity, all fronts right now are just so ahead. 
nothing for Goofy to do. You said he was fed, but it just felt like it just you just missed one extra member. Yeah, you can see the damage right there. Incredible as well, but Fury leading it, obviously, and they are trying to finish the game now. They're trying their hardest to find that assassination, but they're not going to be able to get it as Riddle going for one last desperation play, but the damage just isn't sticking. Slowq is able to find himself a shutdown, but he's already low. He's flashing away to safety, diving and diving away from Wazoys. He secures himself a double kill. Fury has to go golden, but the tower is still under fire by Nolte. They're able to hold on to the game no. for now. Slowq somehow does it. The inhibitor will pay the price, and Gooby's back on the map. How the hell are Riddle still in this game? That should have been the game. I don't know what happened there. Kex, Loki pulled off miracles by staying alive there. And Baron is respawning as well in 20 seconds. There is still hope for you. Fury, no TP. Wasted the only one with a TP as well. So you don't really have to fear the biggest backdoor threat either. As no one can just double TP on towards your base with a minion wave. Gooby got one more chance to try and carry Riddle and Singularity. It feels like they just need that one last nail in Riddle's coffin to really get this game. I think they're trying to get him the uh, Guardian Angel as quick as possible. They're funneling as much gold into this Tristana as possible. you got the Death Cap on Slow Q. He can one-shot Dragdar. He is capable of doing it. We've seen him there. Stopwatch on Gooby. Stopwatch on Dragdar, though. These are two things we should keep our eye on for now. And we're seeing the power of the fresh. It's been banned pretty much the entire tournament long. And Gooby now has to oh, be a little no. bit careful as he takes a lot of damage from Fury. Able to save his life for the moment. But Baron Nasher is on the map and they got LeBlanc clearing the bot lay wave. The blank does have TP, so does Kex. But from the posturing of Riddle right now, they're look looking so uncertain. No, they're not. They're TPing in, actually. MC's going to take the hook. Double teleport's coming in. Slowkey's been caught out by the chains, trying to kite away. Prospect comes in with the hook. Slowkey does a lot of damage on the back line, but now he's running. Chains are in. Stopwatch is used. Everybody else is slowed down by the box zone. There's the shutdown for Fury. On to the fight they go. MC jumps in. QB free firing off into Nolte, but Nolte is so tanky. And that's a double kill. That's going to be even more. The triple kill picked up for Fury as he is jumping away. The teleports are coming into the base. Dragdar takes out Kex, and it's only Gooby once again to hold on to this game. The teleports are coming into the base and Gooby is being run down. Nowhere to go, only a flash to work with and no friends to find. He's gonna get the blast cone. He's gonna get the jump. He's gonna try and make this grand what escape, now? but it's completely <laughs> useless because at the end of the day, his base is being sacrificed. Gooby will lose his life. Fury is just farming up the KDA, farming up the minions. 37 minutes on the clock and Singularity take out Riddle. Eric, yep, we're just waiting there. for it. <laughs> 38 minutes. 38 uh, minutes. But Let's take a little bit more time of it. It was not a clean fashion. Riddle dominated the early game, really, from a good skirmish that we had from them. But one single punish with gold going over to Fury was all Singularity needed to get back yep. into that game. As soon as they got the lead, they just waited for their two items. We talked about it. They wanted to stall out the game a little bit. They did. And once they finally felt confident, they just never ever let Riddle get back into that one. I, you saw the you saw the benefits of LeBlanc in lane versus Akali, but you also saw the benefit of Fresh. They just, it was so hard to punish anyone because of those lanterns. Honestly, a fantastic game there for Singularity, and it was a very close one, but they do take the win. Now, anyway, it's time for us to throw to a break, and when we're back, we'll have our analyst desk to talk a little bit more about that game. So we'll see you in a moment.